Good evening, everybody. Happy 2020. Start of a new year, start of a new decade. Great to see a lot of faces up in here. Um, as we get started, I'd love to just start by thanking the most important people in my life, my dream team, my beautiful wife, Bailey, and our son, Callum Edward, as well as our dream team here in the center. So Chris Proctor, my boss here, the man responsible for a lot of this building happening in the back there. Amy Alcorn, who is the head of wellness services and absolutely the hardest working person I've ever met in my life. Um, Matthew Slater here overseeing our orthopedics. And then Nick Ward, Allen, who look over our performance and our rehab, respectively. And Sarah and the marketing team, big shout out to you guys for making this night happen. So thank you very much. Also, a huge shout out. How many people in here maybe have, I don't know, known a friend who have been in this building before, received services from our awesome therapy team, our awesome performance team, um, our awesome wellness orthopedic marketing teams? They're fantastic. So this place would not be here without the boots on the ground downstairs. So huge shout out to everybody who works here. And a huge shout out to my mojo coach, also known as Mr. Mayor, Jason Collin, for just being an inspiration to me every day and helping me out with leadership development. So Oprah Winfrey, everybody know Oprah, right? Oprah once said, if you want to be successful with your goals, you've got to start with your spirit. Now, my spirit is absolutely lit up when I'm helping people reach their potential. I had the great fortune for the past 15 years of working with elite level athletes in the Division I college arena. And over the past two years, I've been able to be blessed to learn from all of our therapists here, all of our orthopedists, but most importantly, all of our clients here and patients who come through these doors. Now, some things that I really want to harp on today and make sure that we knock out with our goals is going to be make sure that we're excited to train our mind, just like all of those athletes I've trained over the past 15 years. I want to make sure that you know how to set an appropriate goal that's going to really test you and get you excited to work. And then lastly, I want to make sure that you're able to follow through with those goals with a systemized approach so that at the end of the year, you look back and you're like, yeah, that was the best year of my life. So I think tonight will be really applicable to you if you've ever said things like this. I feel like I can get a little bit more out of my health, my relationships, maybe my job, maybe school. Or maybe you're somebody who says, you know, I just don't have enough time to get it all done. Or perhaps you have this huge dream, but you just don't really know how to get there. Now, I want to tell you a little story, a story about a dream that I once had. So, yeah, that was back in my prime. I'm from New Jersey, so Bon Jovi hair, that's where it's at. But my dream uh, as an adolescent was to play professional soccer. And my whole journey in mental performance started right there. I mean, I was so fortunate and blessed to have amazing parents, amazing coaches, and I worked my tail off, I got lucky, I had support, and I earned a full scholarship to the University of Hartford in Connecticut. Now, yeah, Hawks. <laughs> now, while I was there, I did the same thing. I worked really hard. I had a lot of support, but then I got lucky. And my senior year, I got invited to the Major League Soccer Combine. So think of the NFL Combine or NBA Combine. I was one of 64 people invited out to Los Angeles, California to participate in front of the whole Major League, League Soccer staff. Talk about pressure, right? Now physically, I was in tip-top shape. I could sprint, I was strong, I could jump through the roof. Soccer-wise, I was right on point. But mentally, I thought I was there. But as I took off from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to fly across country to Los Angeles, I started just feeling different. All of a sudden, my heart was racing all the time, even when I wasn't playing, just on the plane. My palms were super sweaty. I felt like I couldn't eat. I wasn't sleeping really well. And it only got worse when we touched down in LA. Once we got there, yeah, Cal. <laughs> Once we got there, it only got worse. I played the worst soccer of my life at the biggest moment when it mattered most. I could not wait for those four days to be over. And when it finally ended on that Sunday, 
I'll never forget, I left the Home Depot Center down in LA where we were playing, and I just walked. I walked to Redonda Beach, Hermosa Beach. I walked all day. I walked over 10 miles that day just walking. And the only thing I kept asking myself was why? Why did this happen? I mean, for the past 15 years, I had busted my butt to get this opportunity, to have this moment, and I blew it. I choked. And I felt so demoralized. I felt like I let myself down, my family, my friends, my school. And I didn't know where to go from there. So I began coaching because I thought, I don't know. I feel like I can help somebody else out so that they don't have to go through an experience like this. So I began what I knew most. My undergraduate degree was in exercise physiology. So I started with strength and conditioning. I was a strength coach. I was a soccer coach at my alma mater, Hartford Hawks. And then from there, I moved on to Princeton University. And then a small school, I own a college in New York. After that, I went to Seton Hall University, and that's where I found this major, sports psychology. Wow, that seems pretty cool. That's right up my alley, because at that point, I had now been coaching for eight to 10 years, and I saw athletes were strong. Athletes could jump. Athletes were great in their sport. What's the one thing most athletes didn't train consistently? Their mind. And here's the coolest part. Everything that they work on in their minds is applicable to all of us. I don't care if you're an elite level athlete or not, we all have a brain and we're all using it all day long. So while I was at Seton Hall, I got my master's degree in sports psych and then I got certified through the Association for Applied Sports Psychology. Now, the skill that I learned most during this time was stay in the present moment. So I'm gonna ask you two questions. And if tonight you learn nothing else, just take this slide away from me. Okay, we gotta be loud and proud here. So, anybody know what time it is? Now. Yeah, it's up there, that was easy, right? <laughs> and where are we? Here. Okay, so that was like, I don't know, maybe a C minus, but this isn't just a lecture. What we're gonna do tonight is really get practical, so let's get a little fired up here. What time is it? Now. And where are we? Here. That's what I'm talking about, love it. So, just like any time we're gonna do a workout, or you're gonna go up on the hill, hopefully you're doing a dynamic warm up. Our minds are no different. We gotta warm our mind up. So what I'd like to do is everybody take one minute, turn to the person left or right of you, learn their name, make a new friend, and we're gonna go through this from today. What's one thing that you learned, one thing you did well, and then one thing you're grateful for, go. You got 15 seconds. Can you hear me okay? Okay, if you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. If you can hear me, clap three times. All right, love it. Good job, guys. So if we're gonna work on our minds tonight, we gotta to have a system, right? So the system that I chose is from Dr. Jonathan Fader. Now Jonathan Fader, he's a sport and performance psychologist. He's worked with the New York Mets, he's worked with the New York Giants, and he's also worked with the New York Fire Department. So guy's super smart, he's worked with a lot of athletes I've worked with in the past. And the goal sheet, everybody got a goal sheet? There should have been one on your chair. You also have a pen. So the goal sheet, that you're looking at right there was his original design with some tweaks from our department and our awesome marketing department. We kind of made it our own with his permission, of course. 
So this is our case study tonight. And we're going to come back. Everybody should know her. Tahoe Tessie. Yeah. Everybody know Tahoe Tessie? Yeah. OK. So this is Tahoe Tessie's goals. We met this morning. It was a little chilly out, but everything worked out OK. We're going to talk about Tahoe Tessie's goals for 2020. Now, at the top of your sheet there, you're going to see something very important. It says, better you. Ultimately, your goals should make you a better version of you in whatever aspect you decide to choose. On the left-hand side, it says, find joy in the journey. Now, if we're not having fun and enjoying this process of working towards our goal, what's the point of it, right? Now, on the right-hand side, it says, laugh, smile, and compete. You got to make sure that you're doing all those things. Now, Tahoe Tessie's outcome goals is to be a lean, mean, healthy machine by December 31st of this year. More specifically, what that means is she wants to be 195, she wants to have high energy, be happy, healthy, to live the Tahoe life that we are all so blessed to live. Now, why did I say lean, mean, healthy machine? Because it sounds exciting, right? It's some cool words that are going to really resonate with me. Who just wants to write down, like, lose 20 pounds? That doesn't sound exciting. No, I'm going to be a lean, mean, healthy machine, OK? Her why? She wants to make sure that she can do any sport she wants to make sure that she's an awesome parent, and she's a baller spouse and a fantastic employee. Okay, That's her why. And we're going to go through this with all of you. The process goals, how she's going to get there. Mental health, meditation, and yoga. At least three to 10 minute, little bite-sized chunks per day. That's doable. We can all find three to, 10, three to 10 minutes a day. Nutrition, eat five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. And then physically, Tahoe Tessie is going to get two strength training sessions in downstairs. And then she's also going to make sure that she gets outside to play, because we're all in Tahoe, right? Maybe she's wakeboarding. Maybe she's doing some skiing, snowboarding, rock climbing, whatever it might be. Now, challenges, she wrote down, is family obligations. Things come up, right? And then poor weather. We want to identify those challenges. Her dream team or support system. Everybody knows Smokey the Bear. That's one of her best friends. And then her spouse is the Loch Ness Monster. OK, the remote thing's really working out well for them. So they're just <laughs> kind of letting it go. And then measure, how she's going to measure it. She's going to make sure she measures it by getting feedback from that dream team. She's going to look at her epic pass, see how many days she got on the hill. And then she's going to get her yearly physical to see what the doc says. So that is the case study. We're going to refer back to that often throughout the presentation. Outcome goals. Now, again, this is meant to be practical. You've got a piece of paper. You've got a pen. You can fill this out as we go through the presentation tonight. You can jot down some notes, fill it out later, whatever works best for you. But our outcome goals, we want to make sure that our outcome's something worth fighting for. Okay, We want to make sure that our outcome goals Get us excited. If you're not excited about working towards something, don't even think about pursuing it. You're going to bail within the first four to six weeks. And then make sure it's a challenge, but it's not a threat. Difference is, threats, you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're like nervous. That's not a good thing. Challenges, you stay up late at night because you're excited to work on it, or you wake up early in the morning because you're excited to work on it. Now, your outcome goals, I think of three big buckets. We've got your health, so your physical and mental health. We've got nutrition within that. Maybe personally, with relationships, you want to be happier. Maybe it's parenting. Or I see some of our awesome youth athletes in here. Maybe it's being a better son or daughter. <clears throat> be good, kids. <laughs> Professionally, maybe it's something related to your job, your position, your school, your major. What I'd like you to do tonight is just pick one. Pick one thing within those categories. You can always go back. And I have three sets of goals relating to all these. So outcome goals, example. Again, lean, mean, healthy machine. Specifically, break that down a little bit more. What does that mean? OK, that's what we did. Your why. So your why should create purpose and clarity within your life. Again, your why is something when you wake up in the morning, you're excited to work towards that. This is going to get you locked in with a laser focus. 
and it's going to be something that you're passionate about. If you're not passionate about it, again, bail on it, move to something else. So again, her why is she wants to do any sport, play with her kids, and be a baller spouse and an awesome employee. Process goals. Process goals, this is where the money is. And we're going to spend most of our time tonight really chatting about what these process goals are. So your process goals are actions that lead to the outcome. It's great that Tahoe Tessie wants to be a lean, mean, healthy machine, but if she's only focused on getting there by December 31st, it might be a long year. Okay, what about what she's doing on a daily basis? What about when she achieves some of those smaller goals? We want to make sure that we're focusing on the actions you control in order to get to where you want to be. I hear this a lot. What you want to do and what you want to avoid. So a lot of people, when they set goals, say, ah, oh, i got to stop eating sweets. i got to stop doing this. I can't do this. I can't do that. All you're doing is feeding yourself negative energy and garbage. How about what do you want to do? So rather than i got to stop eating sweets and, and cookies and cakes and that type of thing, what about, hey, I'm going to eat five servings of fruits today. I'm going to eat five servings of vegetables today. I'm going to do this instead. So replace the behavior that you don't want with something that you actually will help you get to your goal. Great example is this. Don't think of an orange snowman. Don't think of a pink elephant. Okay, when you tell yourself don't, and then you insert something after it, your brain's incredible where it will actually erase the don't. And all of you just thought of a pink elephant or an orange snowman, maybe because you saw it, but also that's how your brain works. So your mind filters out the don't. Don't, don't, don't. When I coach, I'm trying to really be cognizant of how many times I tell people, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Nobody wants to be around that. I'm not coming to work with you. You're negative. How about do this, work on this, achieve this? Make sense? Another example is this, basketball player at the free throw line. Do you want them to say, don't miss? Soccer player about to shoot a penalty shot, don't miss? No, make it, drain it, do the thing. You got this, okay? Self-talk, we'll get into that. We've got to make sure that we prioritize the process goals that are really important. This is a really cool book that I read, The One Thing. And the whole idea of it is focus on the one thing that will make everything else in your life easier. We all have to-do lists that are this long. They're huge. There's a million things to do. But pick out on that list what's that one thing you can do that if you do that, everything else will just be a little bit easier. Make sense? So daily, what's something that you could commit to doing? My one thing is I make sure that I wake up at 5 a.m. at the latest, and that little guy who was here earlier, he usually takes care of that for me. But 5 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday, okay? And the reason for that is then you can make sure you get that three to 10 minutes of meditation. Tahoe Tessie, maybe if she wakes up at 5 a.m. instead of six, she can do some meal prep. She can get her fruits, her vegetables ready for the week. Then it's not the excuse of, oh, I didn't have time. No, you didn't make time. Make it a priority. So that's the one thing. Maybe weekly, review your goals on a Sunday. Set yourself up for success the rest of the week. That's the one thing. Because you know if you do that one thing, your week's going to be scheduled out and everything else will be a little bit easier. How about monthly? Maybe you rate your physical, your mental health, your nutrition. That's your one thing. Because you know when you do that monthly, it forces you to reflect. That reflection makes changes in the next month coming up. So focus on the one thing, and then start knocking out the other things. Process goals and follow through. So I'll show you a video here, but I want to preface it with this. This is a video on the, of the Big East Finals in men's basketball division one in 2016. And it was Seton Hall University, go Pirates versus the Villanova Wildcats. And I think that was actually the year that the Wildcats won the national championship. 
And I want you to watch, it's just a highlight video, but I want you to watch and notice what the score was at halftime, and then towards the end of the game, what the score was, and then the final score, and kind of how things went through that process. So I had the great fortune of training all those guys. And almost all the team, the whole starting lineup, at that point, they were sophomores, meaning out of four years, that was only their second year. Very young. But these guys had a belief in what they were doing that was unmatched by any athlete I've ever seen in my life. Did they fight amongst each other? Sure. Did they have disagreements? Absolutely. But when push came to shove, they had each other's back. The most impressive thing that I saw from these players was their self-talk. And we do it all day long. We're doing it right now. The conversation that you have with yourself is more important than any conversation you're going to have with anybody in the world. And here's the cool part. We have the opportunity to shape that. 
But if we're going to shape it and make it what we want, you've got to start with awareness. You've got to practice it. You've got to train it. It's like a muscle. If you don't train it, it's not going to get stronger. You've got to train your mind. So how do you train your mind? How do you become more aware? Probably things you already know. Meditation, yoga, going for a walk, focusing on your breathing. Find whatever it is that works for you. You don't have to do yoga. You don't have to meditate. But find something that you're able to tap into that allows you to just start to notice what your self-talk is when you're doing that activity. And you'd be surprised how much of a carryover you're going to get into your everyday life. So become aware of your thoughts first. That's step number one. Because if you don't know what it is, how are you going to change it, right? And then create it. You create your language. You create your life. It's that simple. The power of I am. How many people woke up this morning and said, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. We all do it. I do it. It's normal. But you got to be aware of it, number one. And then number two, before your feet hit the ground, you have to replace it with something else. The thing that I say is, it's going to be a great day. Even if my kid's been up all night screaming, and I have a million things to do at work, and I've got a snow plow, a bunch of snow, and I might be late to work, it's going to be a great day. And sometimes just saying that when I have to snow blow and then have a really tough day at work and I've been up all night, sometimes just saying that makes me laugh. And it changes my state. And then when I change my state, it becomes, I don't know, just like a pebble kind of going down the hill. It goes faster, it goes faster, it goes faster, and then things just start building. I get that momentum going. So work on your self-talk. It's huge. Mistake ritual. Any of our athletes in here that we've had the privilege of working with, you've probably developed this already. But when you do have that self-talk that's not really serving you in a positive way, have a mistake ritual. So what is that? I got this from playing soccer. I was a goalie. You let up a goal. Nobody likes you on your team. The coach doesn't like you. Things don't go well, right? But I started to develop a mistake ritual from one of my coaches. He said, Ryan, when you let up a goal, you're going to do this. You're going to pick up a piece of grass, OK? You're going to hold on to that piece of grass, and then you're going to throw it away. You're going to clap your hands. You're going to say one, two, or three words, and then you're going to get back in the game, because you can't change what just happened, right? So what's your mistake ritual? Here's a good example, something that works practically every day. Oh, no, I just said, what was it? Open, close your hand, say the word release, and then, boom, you get to move on. So what I want you to do right now, we're going to take one minute again. You're going to partner up. You're going to talk about, oh, no, I just said fill in the blank, because we all have our kind of our best sayings. I'll let you guys figure that out. Let's keep it PG. There are kids in here. And then I want you to develop your physical action. It's got to be quick, easy, and not too weird. Right? If you're doing cartwheels in here, that's not going to work when you're at your desk. Okay? It's got to be something quick. Nobody notices. Right? And then your mantra. One to three words maximum. You don't want it to be a story. Just one, two, or three words. 60 seconds. Ready? Collaborate with your partners. Go. Oh, yeah, no Just problem. So that yeah, yeah. Hey, give me that. That's cool. Can you guys hear me in the back okay? Not my mic. No, uh uh. That's, that's never happened. Awesome. Can you guys hear me in the back okay? Yeah, but do you want to use the mic so you're not straining your voice? Because the hand is, works. So. It's kind of how I talk, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, really, it's no, it's no problem. I was going to say the handhelds work, so that way you're not straining. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. What do you got? Let it go. I like it. 
Elsa or Anna? Who sung that? Elsa or Anna, let it go. It's perfect. That's great. All right, let's bring it back in. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. If you can hear me, clap three times. All right. Pretty good. Getting it by the third time. We don't have to go to four. If we go to four, then it's push-ups after that. It's not. Let's talk about process goals and daily habits. Transitions in our life are huge. Transitions from home to school or work, from school or work to home, from the field to the car, from the car to the field. But how many of us are really aware that we're transitioning? And why I say they're important is the you at work may need to be like really aggressive or just a different version of the you at home. Okay, so maybe just being aware of that will be helpful. So a good thing to do is set a phone alarm. Most of us walk around with our phones all day. And set something in there that states three words. Okay? When you're going into work, maybe it's something or school. Maybe it's I'm smart, I'm strong, I'm brave. When you're coming home, maybe it's I'm present, I'm agile, I'm connected. Because when you get that little reminder, it just sparks, oh, hey, let's flip it. Let's not bring work me home because within 15 minutes, that ain't going to be pretty, right? And vice versa. Also, use your calendar. Use your calendar, Google Calendar or anything in your uh, diary if you write things down. Little reminders, what you want to achieve on a certain day, what you want to achieve per um, hour of the day. That's going to be crucial. Same idea with the phone. Your environment is absolutely critical to your life. Can't stress this enough. So your process goals should be embedded throughout your environment. Because if you're not seeing it often, you're not going to remember. And then four to six weeks after you set that goal you are really excited about, we fall off the wagon. So what do you listen to? What are you watching? Who are the people and what are the relationships in your life? Are they serving your goal? If not, maybe you need to reevaluate what those things are. What kind of food are you eating? Again, is it serving the energy that you want? Physically, what are you doing all day? Are you sitting at a desk? Are you standing? Can you take walks? Can you take breaks every hour? Can you get up and move? Because again, that's going to go right back into what your process goals are. And then what are you seeing? This is one we have a huge influence on. We may not think within our desk or our office, cubicle, wherever we are, that we have much influence on. But looking back kind of years back, everybody would have like a picture, just an old school picture. right? Nice frame, have the family there, maybe a loved one, somebody you care about, they'd have it on their desk. Why? Because you want to see that often. It makes you feel good. So I want to tell you a little story about an athlete that I worked with in the past. And I, I've said this story before, but I think it's worth repeating. If you haven't, this will be great. So this is an athlete. Her name was Bird. That's her nickname. And she was a women's basketball player at Seton Hall. She transferred in from West Virginia University. Good school. Now, the rules are when you transfer in from one school to another school, you have to sit for the year, meaning you can't participate in any games. You can practice with the team. You can work with the strength and conditioning coach. But to be honest, most athletes, most athletes don't want to work with the strength and conditioning coach six days a week. Bird's first year, her and I were like married. Every day, two to three hours a day, we were training together. Now Bird, she came in and she was about 45 pounds overweight. So needless to say, we had a lot of work to do. And we worked hard. She worked hard. Every day, six out of the seven days a week, for a year. She busted her butt. She lost all the weight. She went in and played amazing basketball her junior year. She was Big East All-Conference player, nominated for All-American. Just fantastic, like storybook. It's all you could ever want as an athlete at that level. At the end of the year, she got diagnosed with a medical condition gained 50 pounds as a result of it, completely outside of her control. 
So imagine that. You come in to a totally new environment. You know nobody. You're 50 pounds overweight, and you have to work with me every single day when she necessarily doesn't really like just running and doing sprints and lifting and all that. She wants to play ball. So she does that for a whole year, has the best year of her life after that, and then gains 50 pounds. That stinks. That's so unfair. And she was down in the dumps, to say the least. So we're like, we got to get a team around you, bird. So we got our nutritionist. We got our athletic trainer. We got our physical therapist. We got the coaches. We got myself. We got the doctors. We all got in a room, and we're like, we, we got to make some changes here. We got to help this girl out. So the first thing we started with was a vision board. I said, Bird, we're going to make a vision board, and you're going to see this thing every day. Because we've got to change your environment. We've got to change your state so you're ready to work for another year. So I asked her, what's your favorite quote? We wrote her favorite quote up on there. What's really important to you? Well, I want to get a good job after college. Awesome. What's your favorite word? Chill. Who's your favorite player? This girl on the USA women's basketball player, team. Eating good was going to be fantastically important for her. So feel good feel good. She wanted to make sure she graduated with a great GPA. She wanted to travel to Spain, so we put a picture there. Success and opportunity were crossroads that were really important to her. Her mom was her favorite person in her life. So we put all this good stuff around her, not just about basketball, but looking at her as a whole person first, and then basketball, and we got to work. She put this on her mirror. She put it in her car. She put it in her locker. She put it everywhere she would see it all day long, and she got to work. So what would your vision board look like? It's amazing the power of something like this. She came back her senior year, lost 40 of the 50 pounds, didn't have the same year as before, but had a pretty darn good year. So she left college having a great experience and now had skills to overcome anything that life threw at her, which was awesome. Super pumped. And now she has a great job and she's living the dream. So Tahoe Tessie, remember her? We haven't seen her in a little bit. But let's go back to what her goals were. Mental health, meditate or do yoga three to 10 minutes a day. Nutrition, five servings, fruits and vegetables. Physical, two strength training sessions, two outdoor activities. Those are things that she controls. She controls getting three minutes in of meditation. You can find three minutes. Get off Instagram, get off Facebook. There's your three minutes. Nutrition, she controls that because she's the one who goes to the food store if she plans appropriately and gets the food that she needs and packs it ahead of time. And then physically, she knows that she can get here twice a week. And even in those weeks that she can't, she can find some way to do maybe a body weight workout at home. Okay, but these are all controllables that nobody can take from her. And she knows if she does this, it's gonna help her get to the outcome goal, which is lean, mean, healthy machine. Focus on the process. One third of this presentation has been on the process. That tells you how important it is. Two big takeaways tonight. The time is it now, where are we here? Focus on the process and enjoy it. Challenges. Challenges are written on your sheet as well. So there's always things outside of your control. Other people's actions, opinions, Mistakes from other people, other people's feelings. But there's a lot inside your control, your attitude, effort, behavior, actions. So we want to list our challenges because they're going to come up. Life gets in the way. People make mistakes. Environments change. So if you're not prepared to be agile and move when things happen, then you're going to get off track from your goals. So list out what your challenges will be and then have a backup plan so that when it happens, ah, you can laugh it off. Internet goes down. Could happen any second now, right? You better believe I have a PowerPoint saved on that thing, and I have a hard copy over there. Have a backup plan, folks. That's within my control. Do the work. Other challenges. Give yourself wiggle room. I had an athlete once who got injured. I was working for another strength coach, and he turned to the athlete and he said, well, it's time to gear up or give up. And I was like, man, that was harsh. Gear up or give up? Like, they just blew their knee out. And he was like, no, it's time to gear up or give up. And I was like, 
No, you're right. It is. You can cash it in. You could be mopey. I'll give you one day for that. After that, it's time to gear up and let's get to work. There's an awesome book called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Talks all about tapping into your why, having passion, having perseverance for pushing through when the challenges come about and things get hard. Good one to read if you don't have it on, on your uh, list. Go for it. How we view these challenges and any failure is crucial. This is an awesome book, Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck, psychologist. Having a growth mindset is critical to our success in achieving our goals. There's two kinds of mindsets. Fixed mindset. I'm not smart. I'm not strong. I'm not, 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 not. Growth mindset. I'm not smart yet, dot, dot, dot. I'm not strong yet, dot, dot, dot. If I work hard, I can get smart. If I work hard, I can get strong. But growth mindset is all, I have the capability to do this. If I roll up my sleeves, put in the work. Thomas Edison, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. That's pretty cool. I want to show you a quick video of famous failures. Now, if you can name the person that they're talking about, you get a prize. So you got to be first, though. People in the back, if you hear somebody back there, Sarah and my team, make sure you hook them up with some swag. Let's see if we can get this thing rocking. After being cut from his high school basketball team, who said it? You get a Clementine. It's organic. He wasn't able to speak until he was almost four years old, and his teachers said he would never amount to much. Well done. You get a band and some chapstick. <laughs> yeah. Boom. My girl. Good job. Fired from a newspaper for lacking time. imagination and having no original ideas. I don't want to throw this and knock somebody out. <laughs> so I'm in the back, hit him. After being diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency, which made him smaller in stature than most kids his age. Catch. At 30 years old, he was left devastated and depressed after being unceremoniously removed from the company he started. Well done. School dropout whose personal struggles with drugs and both. I want to make sure we're getting the back people here. Bam! Oh, and a band. I'll get you a Clementine too. Too stupid to learn anything, and that he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Well done. Edison up here twice. Rejected by Nick and recording studios, who said, we don't like their sound. They have no future in show business. Man, well done. His first book was rejected by 27. Another Clementine. Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, well done. His fiance died, failed in business. Had a nervous breakdown and was defeated in his elections. Who said that? <laughs> oh, band. Okay. If you've never failed, you've never tried anything new. So that would be a bummer if those people just stopped, right? Got to keep going. Support. Who is your dream team? Tahu Tessie, back to her. This is going to be the person that gives you a shoulder to cry on when you need it, because we all need that at some point. But it's also the person who takes out that wooden spoon. I grew up like in the 80s, and my mom threatened me with a wooden spoon. She never got me with it, but she's on my dream team, because I know if I slack off, 
That wooden spoon was coming out. She wouldn't use it, but she'd chase me around the house with it. So you need somebody on your dream team that's going to wake you up when you're starting to slack off. Smokey the Bear, Loch Ness Monster, they do that for Tahoe Tessie. Everybody know my boy Richie, Richard Simmons? So measurement is critical. We're doing all this work, but we've got to reflect. We've got to know, are we on the right path? Do we need to be agile? Do we need to be adaptable? Do we need to change? Or, hey, yeah, you're doing a great job. Keep doing the things that you're doing. So daily, great thing. What's one thing you did well? One thing you learned, because learning is growth. And then one thing you're grateful for, OK? Weekly, how are you reflecting? Are you picking one day or one time per week to really reflect, hey, what did I accomplish this week? Am I maybe one step closer towards that goal? Yearly, are you reflecting? Maybe in December, you're reflecting on the previous year. And this part is critical. There's a reason we're passing out organic clementines and bands and little chapsticks, because you got to celebrate along the way. If you're not celebrating, the small victories along the way, you're really missing out. Because that means you're only going to be happy on December 31st if it's a year-long goal. So great example of that is somebody who comes in here and they just maybe had a knee injury. They tore their ACL. If you're only going to be happy when you are fully recovered and back skiing, snowboarding, rock climbing, mountain biking, fill in the blank, it's going to be a long recovery. you got to celebrate when you get that brace off. You gotta celebrate when you go from two crutches to one crutch. You gotta celebrate when you're going from one crutch to no crutches. When you gain five more degrees of flexion or extension. You've gotta celebrate those things. Take a moment and just be like, okay. Don't just move on, oh, I want more. No, take that in. Great job. Maybe you go buy some organic clementines, eat them with your friends. Maybe you treat yourself to a night out, movie, but do something. Recognize that. It's critical. Her example, dream team feedback. That's how she's measuring. Getting feedback from your team is critical. How many days, now you have a number on the hill that she was getting. And then that yearly physical with her physician. There she is. Now. This is all well and good. It's nice to write things down. But if we're not seeing it often, where's it going to go? Maybe in your drawer. Maybe you clean out the drawer four months later. You find that goal sheet. You pick it up. You're like, oh, man. You've got to put it somewhere that's going to be visible, just like your vision board, on your refrigerator, on your mirror, on your desk, next to your bed, in your locker, somewhere. Make sure you're seeing your goals often, because if you're not constantly creating an environment that allows you to see them, you're going to forget about it. You've got to train your mind. You've got to work on it. Finish off with just a couple of tips. Have something worth fighting for. Make sure you're focusing on the process. Create that awesome dream team around you. And then make sure you celebrate your victories along the way. Please, this is my passion, if you haven't noticed. I love talking about training your mind because it's something we all can be doing. So please follow up. My email's up there. Email me if you ever want to meet and just chat and see how you can do things better or maybe a loved one, somebody you care about, can do a better job with their goals or confidence or overcoming adversity, whatever it might be. This is my Instagram page. I try and post a lot when it comes to sports psychology information that's out there. Come to Barton Performance by Altus downstairs. We're creating more and more sessions on mental performance because we're seeing more and more of a need for it. We also have amazing health coaches and wellness navigation here in this building that are super well equipped with everything that we just talked about. And if it's something that's a little bit more serious of nature, there's always the Barton Health Community Center for any um, behavioral or mental health issues. See them, use them, because we want a nice, strong community here. I'll leave you with this. Go crush it. What time is it? Now. Where are we? Here. Awesome. Thank you so much.